Hello, my name is Andrew, and I'm here alongside Colin, and what's this? Not no Lee? Wow! Well, we are Cal Gaming, and welcome to our Let's Play of Batman Arkham Asylum for the PlayStation 4. Yeah, you might find that this Let's Play is going to be, well, the first couple of parts for this Let's Play are going to be very quiet because Lee is not here with us today. Oh, uh, well, he's not dead. <laughs> aye, thank God we don't have to listen to him bloody advertising his channel about seven fucking times in one game. <laughs> So yeah, we're going to start off with my choice this time, it's, it is Batman Arkham Asylum, and this is the remastered version on the PlayStation 4. Why? Mainly because the frame rate is better, and just because it looks better. It was a night, and it was a stormy night in Gotham City. Batman sat his nonsense yet again. Can I just ask, is it ever sunny in Gotham City? Nope. <laughs> is, is there just like a permanent cloud, like just stuck? Yeah, that's that, that's just pretty much summarised the entire city at top of, of, of it all. Yeah, no sunshine whatsoever, it's always dark. Then again, Batman wouldn't be really good at, at his job if it was sunny all the time, would he? <laughs> but then I guess like, uh, what, what about like weather reports? Like, everyone knows what the weather's gonna be. <laughs> Welcome to Scotland. <laughs> So, uh, how about you, Colin, because I know you're not fond of, um, in terms of superheroes, you're more towards Marvel. Yeah. How did you just get into Arkham into the Arkham series, even though, like you said, um, you played these? Uh, yeah? Yeah, I've played them like you. You gave me uh, Asylum, City, and uh, Origins as a birthday present. You got me like the Game of the Year edition, and uh, with all like, the DLC in that. Mm -hmm. uh, I played through Arkham Asylum like quite quickly, and I did enjoy from from what I played. I think it was like the best superhero game that I've ever played, because like, I know that like with the Spider-Man games they've been kind of hit and miss recently, and there hasn't really been like any other superhero games that have like been on par with this one. Uh, I've still to get through uh, some of the later games as well, which is because I've had like such a massive backlog to get through, it. and I know like with uh, with these games, there's it's, like all like open worlds so there's like lots of exploration to do and i know andrew that you've pretty much like got this game off my heart now <laughs> <laughs> probably yeah yeah well how i started with asylum was back in this was back in high school years where back then i did not know who batman was i wasn't even into superheroes at the time but i do remember an old friend of mine who loved the series played the demo to bits wouldn't stop talking about the game and it wasn't until the around the time city was on halfway out and and that's when I realized, well, okay, I'll, I'll give this a try because I really liked the, the Dark Knight. I really liked Batman. I want to try his games. Started with the Asylum demo, absolutely loved it, and I've been a fan of the series since then. In fact, I, have e I know it does, this doesn't mean much in the end, but I made it my own personal goal to plot them every single of the <laughs> Arkham Asylum games, including Origins, which was, let's just say, the most unstable with its broken multiplayer. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, as you can see, they're a lot better. Holy shit, Colin! It's Brian Cranston! Oh, yes, yeah, so it is. Holy fuck! When did he get here? <laughs> when his contract for Breaking Bad ran out. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, you've played the PS3 version, so how, how do you first, of a first glance, how do you think this looks in terms of graphics? I think it, it looks much better, especially in terms of the, the lighting, because, like, although. Like, I'm, not, I'm not saying that the PS3 version looks bad, like, it does look good, but like everyone does kind of look like they're straight from like Madame Two Swords. <laughs> well, in fact, Madame Two, Two Swords look more realistic. Like, uh, the, the people in this game, sort of, they do look very like wax looking, mm -hmm. uh, but I think they, they've really fixed that up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, that's what I was thinking, first thinking when I first played the PS3 version. Like When I saw this, this scene in particular where you, obviously you can't do anything, you can only walk in a straight line. But at least you have the Joker here to keep you entertained, but when you zoom in on the Joker, even though the character models, like you said, Colin, they look like moving wax figures. Yeah, it's like they, they've just got like, a really sort of plasticine look to them, like you, you feel like you can like touch them and it, you can imagine they would like feel like wax when you touch them. I know that's sort of like a weird sort of thought, but you know what I mean. <laughs> but like, I feel like they, they do look a bit more realistic here. And yes, that is Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker himself, back as the Joker. How does that go through your head when you've been more towards Star Wars as a kid? It, it's it's just sort of like a bit of a mindfuck in a way <laughs> because like uh, like with Luke Skywalker, he's always like this sort of like golden boy of like good guys mm -hmm. in a way, and it's just so weird to like see him be put in this sort of role. Uh, 
and he's the, and when, and also when I read um, some of the comics, the only comics I read of the DC are the really good stories like um, Flashpoint Paradox, Black, was it Brightest Day, Blackest Night, and obviously the Killing Joke, which is probably my favorite comic book. Where every time I read the dialogue, the only voices I hear in my head of the Joker is Mr. Hamill. <laughs> But in terms of live action performance, I'm gonna have to go with Heath Ledger because not only was he um, creepy in that movie, but he was also he got right to the point where it's terrifying to be with him. Mm -hmm. Jared Leto, I'm not so sure about it. So, well, I think with uh, with Heath Ledger, like um, you, you do sort of like believe that like his mind is totally fucked up. Aye, you can like really tell with that. But I think like with. Uh, Jared Leto. Jared Leto, yeah. Like, I know we've only seen him for like maybe 20 minutes in Suicide Squad, but like I feel uh, he's, he's not really like selling it to me. Like I know that I'm not really into Batman as much as you, mm -hmm. but like, I, I know who the Joker is, mm -hmm. and uh, I feel like he's, he isn't really sort of like selling a sort of uh, psychotic clown. He, he kind of looks like just a gothic like teenager like with makeup on that's what it just kind of looks like to me that's just my personal opinion yeah that's absolutely fine but what the point is is that with the character like joker you can't give it um a strict plot like or a strict character stereotype like oh he's always this no matter what universe or what multiverse or alternate reality we put him in it's like he could be a psycho he could be a madman he could be a clown he could be a, a robber but at the same time it's just the way he plays off any actor who's done this, this particular role, always plays it off to make it as if he doesn't have a plan in the end, when in fact he does. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, look at the Christian Bale Dark Knight trilogy. I mean, well, not so much the first and the last movie because they didn't have Joker, but the amount of pressure that and the things that Joker did just to get Harvey Dent to see, look, everybody can go crazy. All it takes is one bad day and that's you gone. Mm -hmm. Remember this guy from Suicide Squad? <laughs> much different here now, doesn't he? Ah, uh, he's gained a lot of mass. <laughs> By the way, that is actually true in the comics for this character, where they mentioned it in Suicide Squad, but I'm not sure if you picked it up, where he was born with a, a rare condition which caused him to develop reptilian features, such as skin and growing, and it's true that when he, as he grows older and older, he becomes more and more like a crocodile, hence this. So, are you trying to say that his mom shagged a crocodile? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I don't think they want to. I don't think they go into that much detail in the comics. And I'll be honest, that first um that shoes joke that Joker did when I first played the game, it flew over my head. <laughs> and I know it's supposed to be say, something like Killer Shoes, because it has Killer Croc or Croc heels. You know, for an asi asi uh, a psychotic asylum, you gotta love that they have 50-inch plasma TVs all over the place. Not where you're going. Yeah, they think they get like uh, Sky Sports and that on there. <laughs> <laughs> what if that's what, what if you go buy some of the cells and some of the of, of the image I'm watching Rangers and Celtic? <laughs> oh, here's me trying to be cinematic with the camera because <laughs> I can't do anything here. All I can do is wait and talk to the Joker. Well, at least I'm trying to instead of doing nothing at all. Yeah. That cow really, really looks really skin tight. You can see his jawline of cheekbones. That must be uncomfortable. You've never let me catch you this easily. What are you? <laughs> and yeah, that is Kevin Conroy. He's been voicing Batman since the animated days back in the early nineties, and he's still voicing him today. He must really love his job. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like, like I said before with the Joker. The Mark Hamill is the voice you hear when you read the books, but as for Batman, you always hear Conroy, no matter what you're reading. At least, like, well, I feel like if I was to think of Batman. That is the sort of voice that I would What's expect to come from him. <laughs> that includes your favourite lines, like, Where's the tracker? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the tracker? <laughs> See, that, that just cracks me up. Alright, uh, Christian Bale, I will admit, he didn't sound as bad in Batman Begins, but when he got to Dark Knight Rises, that's when it got ridiculous. But who can perfect um... And then you've got Ben Affleck's voice, which, I'll be honest, it works, because it's a, it's a modulator that sounds menacing. Because mm -hmm. I like the idea that, you know, he's a billionaire, but to hide his identity, he's got to ma manipulate his voice. Only three? <laughs> I'll be sure to try harder next time. What say try for a hundred. Yeah, you're a real psycho. Oh, look, it's the old commissioner. 
And by the way, that because remember we said about the ca and yet even in the PS3 version, the characters look like wax figures. I'm convinced that for the mooks and the police to use the exact same body type because Commissioner Gwen is never, never this buff. It's probably just sort of like uh, frame is Batman. In a way. Like, like Commissioner Gordon. Like if anyone was to break out, he'd fucking sort them out himself. Ah, uh, exactly. Who needs the dark, the dark knight when you've got a body like Gordon? <laughs> Yeah, let's not put that uh, word the, the best detective in the asylum just to make sure people stay in their place. We can handle it ourselves. I'm sure nothing's gonna go wrong. You okay? He surrendered almost without. And yeah, the character models in this do look a bit, um, a little bit more less sharpy as they were in the PS3 version. A little bit. See, I told you he's not going to escape. I'm telling you. Oh, look at that. Loose. Alert the oh no, we should have fought this in the first place. <laughs> it's like, surely Batman must have fought like this is too easy. I had just said, no, fuck you guys, I'm going in. The joke's on you. <laughs> oh god. Honey, I'm home. Mr. <laughs> bitch. Ah <laughs> oh, yes, who can forget about Harley? <laughs> Now, okay, 10 minutes, 11 minutes in, and now we finally get some gameplay. <laughs> whoop de doo Trust you games try to be all cinematic nowadays. <laughs> well, it's good for when you first play, but on multiple playthroughs you just wish you could skip it. I do wish that in multiple playthroughs that there was an option that Batman that was aware that you're bored and then just starts pushing the trolley, like, come on, let's get moving. <laughs> and Alex, and this is me, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, ragdoll physics. <laughs> this is games plagued with ragdoll physics. <laughs> so I'll explain how the combat system works. It is not a typical hack, hack and slash game like button mashing. You have to time your presses. The bigger and the more times you, pre you build up your combo, the bigger and stronger you get. And if you, lo you lose that combo if you miss a hit or you, you take a hit by your, the enemies yourself, you can counter the enemy's attacks when the spider sense appears above your head. Spider sense? <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like. Fun fight, well... Not really a fight, I'm sure everyone knows it by now, but like the more recent Spider-Man games, they've been like taking this sort of formula. <laughs> Trying to copy it? Yeah, but like, as, as you saw from... Whoa, okay. <laughs> as you saw from uh, the Amazing Spider-Man 2 gameplay, like, I'm sure you've seen some of the reviews. Mm. It didn't work out too well. <laughs> Like that, that's just, uh, is it, is it Beanox that developed the more recent Spider-Man games? It's because it, pretty much all they were told to develop for were Spider-Man games and nothing else. And they just got a bit fatigued from it, so... Who could, uh, know what they want to do? It's like, you gotta give developers some sort of, um, flavour to their development. I mean, you can't just st stick to one franchise. Then again, I don't know what Sonic's team's excuse is. Mm. There we go, a Sonic and our, another Sonic reference in our games. <laughs> Then Mario's just wondering when he's going to get a shout out. <laughs> Aye, that is Lee's worry to worry about. Of course we'll, that, we'll leave that to the big man once he comes back. <laughs> if I land back, that is. So what's it going to be? Is it just going to be Ka Gaming? <laughs> Ka! No, I think for now anyway, yeah. And that there is a Riddler Trophy. What does that do? It, it unlocks shit. You unlock character bios that you can read up on if you're not familiar with the mythos. You can look up character trophies, and then these are all clues. This is essential if you want to go after the Riddler in this game. And these include collectibles such as Riddler trophies, um, riddles you need to solve, Joker teeth. So in terms of all that collectible stuff, I will be getting them if they're in the way, but I will not be showing every single collectible in the game. Mainly so I don't waste you guys, your guys' time. But if, it, if I know it's there, I'll, I'll take maybe 10 minutes to collect it. <laughs> Well, one cape. Yeah, that cape looks really thick. <laughs> and it looks heavy too. And by the way, one of these um sound alarms that, that you hear in the blaring in the background, it is actually my wake up alarm. <laughs> exact same sound effect. <laughs> yeah, if you're wondering why I'm throwing a banner, it's because I know there's Joker Teeth there. Because for some reason Joker Teeth did not appear in your detective mode. Detective mode basically allows you to see everything in the blink of an eye, where you can see whether foes are armed or unarmed, if they're terrified, if they're calm, give you, and it could be also be used to solve problems like 
scanning for fingerprints for Pacific Trials and um, secrets you need to obtain. So I really hope you like the colour blue when using it. <laughs> that's pretty much all you're going to see for half of this game. <laughs> <laughs> and what was it that Batman said there? He doesn't work alone. Well, explain Mr. Robin, Mr. Bruce Wayne. Uh, he's probably like <laughs> sitting in his room, like fucking crying away to himself. <laughs> I thought we were friends. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, his hand up, up above the display case. <laughs> and here's Oracle, aka Barbara Gordon. The first Batgirl, but after the killing joke, she was left paralyzed. Joker's not far ahead. Aye, so she can no longer be Batgirl, so she's stuck in the wheelchair, but she's essentially our tele um hacker, so to speak. Thank God. It's Zaz. He's got Okay, random black guy, what do you want? Wait <laughs> here. Victor Zaz, I'll be honest, I never even heard of this villain. Even when I played the game for the first time, I never knew who Zaz Zaz was. I see anything that looks even a little bit like a bat, and this guard... Oh shit, why did I get the bat tattoo then? <laughs> I see anything that looks like a bat. Fucking get it. And the way this, this game's structured also, it's a bit like Metroid in a way, where you explore some areas, then there's areas you can't get to, like that grate up there, which I know there's a Riddler trophy there, but I can't get it just now because I don't have the necessary upgrade. And then you and again like Metroid, you find an upgrade, then you go back to previous areas and explore where you couldn't explore before. How did a patient like Victor get free? You got a character my about that Eye of Zaz. <laughs> he wants to kill the guard. A, a, a villain that probably not even the most sympathetic of Batman fans don't care about it. <laughs> Is Slipknot in this game? Nope. No. Slipknot, I've not, I've not, I've not, I've not again, like Zaz, I had no idea who Slipknot was, but he's even more obscure than Zaz from what I heard in the comics. I mean, you heard it in the movie itself, he's the man who can climb anything and he specialises in ropes. <laughs> you, you know he'd like try to get out of this game and then get his head blown off. <laughs> <laughs> After about, what, two lines of dialogue? <laughs> you, you could tell from that teaser trailer that he was going to die. Because <laughs> that's the thing with all any Suicide Squad form of media, you, at least one member of the squad is going to die because of something stupid. Oh hi Harley. Oh, hi, man. By the way, this is going to sound very controversial. But am I the only one who gets annoyed whenever Harley Quinn speaks? Um, I don't think so. It's nowhere annoying as, um... Oh, who else is annoying in terms of high-pitched voices? Uh... I don't... Charmy B? Well, she's not that annoying. It's it can, I understand if you're annoyed at it first, but once you get used to it, you get to get used to it. I mean, this is the voice from the animated series as well. Look at those lips. <laughs> yeah, and here's a fun fact as well. Look at Batman's chin, right? And by, the, by the end of the game, he'll grow a stubble. He'll grow a stubble by the end of the game. Keep an eye out for that, folks. <laughs> 